Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to another episode of Houseplants Ranked, a show in which I take a bunch of houseplants and I rank them according to what I think of them. This does usually offend people, uh, deal with it, I guess. So if you couldn't already tell from the title, today's video is about more sort of Halloween-y looking plants, so that usually means dark foliage, you know, goth plants kind of vibe. I was going to do a more informational video on these kind of plants, but I thought, you know what, I think this format's just a bit fresher, a little bit more fun, it's a little bit more fluid, and it, I think it's just nicer to watch than just generally just sitting there with photographs just talking about them. I know this is kind of the same thing, but at least this way I get to actually tell you more of my opinion and kind of trash talk the plants a little bit. And I know you'll like that. Like, I know y'all are here for it. So that's what we're going to do today. It's essentially an amalgamation of what you guys have suggested I look at. I'm not sure how many plants I've got. I think I have around about 20 plants today. So I'm going to get right into it. Before I do, I want to do one last shout out for my merch that I have going at the minute. It's Halloween related merch. I don't actually have it on because it's at the unit and I meant to grab it and wear it for you today and I've completely forgotten to grab it. I'm actually not at the unit at the minute hence the screen. But I have a really cute pumpkin logo for the shop, so if you're interested in purchasing that, I will leave the link to that, and to be honest, any of my merch down below. I do actually sell these as well, this normal Red Plant Shop t-shirt that I have on me. I sell that too, so if you're interested in getting one of those, the link is down below. Anyway, on with the video. Now, I may have a cocktail, because why not? I may have lipstick around the straw, and I may have really bad lips. That is because I have a cold sore, so I won't spend too much time on this. Anyone that's watched this series will know the scoop. But I have here categories. Now, these categories here, this category at the bottom is the worst. So it runs from the worst to the best. So sexually attracted, for example, is the best. So we have for the drone at the bottom, which, again, fans of the channel will know what this means. Um, that is the shittest category that I could put a plant in. Next category up is let's test shipping delays. Next category up is yes boy, so that's like middle of the road. Then we have iconic. A plant can be iconic for a few reasons. It could just be iconic for the way it looks. Then we have sexually attracted, which is like the top, top tier. This is, in my opinion, the best of the best and all the rest. So those are the categories we have. So what should I go for? I'm going to actually legitimately have to look up some of the names of these plants because some of them aren't familiar to me and I have forgotten them. So if I get the name wrong at any point, I will put it on the screen. So just bear that in mind. I'll pick up something that I do know. And I'm going to start with this one here. Now, I tend to drop plants into this category, if you haven't seen these videos before, before I rank them so I can talk about them. So this plant here is the Colocasia Black Magic. And I've actually wanted this plant for a while, and it was my birthday very recently, it was my birthday on the 10th of October, so the 10th of the 10th, and one of my birthday presents from Ben was a black magic. So I actually own this plant now, and I have got it from like a really large plug, so the plant's maybe like this big, so it's maybe like 10 inches tall. I love this plant, I have been very enamoured by all the pictures that you see on the internet. The only thing is, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on it, but I'm sure Ben told me that light is really dependent on getting this color out of the plant, because normally it is quite green. So I don't know if it's got to be high light or low light to get it to look quite black. I suspect with all my knowledge on plants, it's high light to get it to look black. Just to let you know firsthand that these things can be quite greeny. It's not like guaranteed to grow with black leaves, but it is a very, very pretty plant. I can't tell you anything about it. Literally, I've had it a week. It's in the pot that it arrived in. It's in my unit. It's on the floor. It's getting watered. So I can't really tell you anything about it. I know that it's a popular choice for like a goth plant. And I also know that it grows mega fast. And that is honestly the same for any colocasia. If you want a plant that will grow like vegetation levels of fast. Get a colocasia generally because it will blow your mind how quickly they grow. It's not my first colocasia, it's my second colocasia. Personally, this plant for me... Shit, is it iconic? This is the thing, because I'm, I'm very new to this, I don't actually know. For me, I'm gonna keep it where it is. I don't know enough. I know fine well it doesn't just grow black, therefore it can't probably be iconic, even though it's probably a very popular choice. I'm gonna keep it where it is because I think that's probably... That's honestly probably where it should go. So, next up, I'm going to go for this one. This is... It's probably going to be an iconic choice, actually. This is the Alocasia Amazonica. Now, I don't love these plants. The only plant I've ever had of this plant was last year during the documentary, and I bought a variegated one off eBay. Uh, needless to say, that revered. If you don't know my opinion on variegated Alocasia, 
Uh, my opinion is essentially be very careful because they will revert like wildfire. There are tips and tricks to get it back. Um, usually, by the way, that involves smashing the plant back to the comb and growing it out again from scratch. If you want to know what my method is to basically and you know get the variegation back, you've got to lose your plant and go back to the comb. Aside from that, because we're not talking about variegates today, this plant is a nice plant. I've just never really liked it, guys. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe I've seen it too much. I don't know. It's not very special to me. I appreciate that it's a very good, accessible dark foliage plant, though. Like, I do get that. You can get it in most plant shops, or at least where I am, which is the UK. I'd hazard a guess to say that the EU is the same, maybe even US, I don't know. It's quite easily obtainable, and for that reason, uh, it's between these two. I'm not going to say iconic because I don't like it enough, but I think for a lot of people it's here. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to keep it here, though, because it, it's just not sexy enough. I think there's, there's certainly other things on this list that I would put in there, and that ain't it. Excuse me while I have a little bit of cocktail. Mmm, so good. There is a recipe for what I'm drinking, by the way, in my cocktail video that I did with Ben a little while ago. If you want to know what I'm drinking and how to make it, check that video out. Also, you've missed a great video, by the way. If you want to see me drunk, check that video out. It's, it's an absolute hoot. I'm going to pick up a plant that it is quite common. I don't know the full name of it. And I've actually wanted it for some time, you know, and I've never picked it up. And I think when I move house, because I'm going to be moving house in a few months, I might get this, you know. This, I don't know the full name, really sorry. Um, but this here is a type of oxalis. It's basically like a dark oxalis. And I'm pretty sure, don't quote me, but these leaves open and close like butterflies. So if you like Maranta and stuff like that, I believe this plant performs very similar. I feel like this plant would have the same care as a Maranta just because they're quite fragile looking. It's a guess. Again, never owned one. Don't even know anyone that owns one. But I'd be really willing to have one of these. I'm kind of, I'm kind of here for it. So you might see me pick one of these up. Maybe next year. Definitely not this year, but next year. I might try one of these. I quite like it, even though I've never owned one. I'm actually going to push it into Iconic because, well, one, it's not just dark foliage. One, it's guaranteed dark foliage if you buy this type of Oxalis. I'm pretty sure that it does open and close, which means it's even cooler. And I know a lot of people own this plant, and a lot of people love this plant. So I actually think it probably belongs in Iconic. I'm gonna get this one out of the way. I've mentioned this in like the last two videos, so apologies for this coming up a third time. This here is the Anthurium Ace of Spades. I will reiterate the story about Anthurium Ace of Spades very quickly because I don't want to, you know, drone on about the same thing. Long story short, a couple of years ago, this plant was in TC production and no one really wanted it, so it didn't really sell. So TC producers stopped making it. Uh, fast forward to two years later, it's worth high treble digits. I think you can't really find them. Everyone loves them. Everyone wants them. Ain't that the truth? I never usually put it in iconic because no one cared, but now they do because there's less of it. It's one of those classic things and I don't really buy into that kind of shit. I'm going to leave it where it is and yes, boy, because it's great for dark foliage. It's great for a goth plant because it's dark. Honestly, for the money and for wanting dark foliage, you can do a lot better than this plant. Like, it is dark foliage, but it's not super dark. It's not black. You know what I mean? Like, you, you could genuinely do a lot better for your money, especially if you're paying, like, $500, 500 pounds, 500 euros. It might be even more than that if you can find one. It's nice as a collector's item, but if you just want a nice goth plant for Halloween or just to bring out your inner goth, um, it, you can do better. Just to be totally honest, you can do better. So it's a nice plant. I like it. I don't have anything against it or anything like that, but I'm not going to say that it's great. For the purpose of this video, and to keep it in line with what the video is for, I'm actually going to move it down a category, guys. I'm going to move it here into Let's Test Shipping Delays, and that's genuinely because for the money and for a goth plant, you can do like 10 times better than that. It doesn't mean I fucking hate the plant. It just means, yo, for a goth plant, for what you're looking for, to add a bit of darkness to your life, this ain't it. I think you can do better. So, let's bring in an old friend. I don't know why it's an old friend, I've never owned one. Here we have the Philodendron Black Cardinal. I have history with it, even though I've never owned it, because on my first ever Red Plant Index, I talked about the Black Cardinal in, you know, in the Philodendron Red Plant Index, and I basically said that you couldn't get a variegated version because it's a Black Cardinal, which is such a fucking stupid thing to say. Uh, that's bullshit, you you can get a variegated one. They're, they're horrible. I uh, see my last video for full details. But, um, Black Cardinal, I don't know how much they are. It's black, it fits the bill. I don't love them because I don't love the growth pattern. Again, it's not the most attractive thing. So if I'm going to be really cutthroat, I'm also going to move it here. Because although it has black foliage, 
I think you can do better. I think you can. If you want something that's super easy to grow and maybe just maybe get a bit bigger, then yeah, good plant. But I think for what people are after, when I think of goth plants, I think of something slightly on the more ornamental side. So I don't think Black Cardinal fits the bill, personally. So I'm going to leave it there because I don't... I'm not crazy about it. I don't know anyone that is. So I'm trying to avoid the plants that I don't know the names of <laughs> because I'm going to have to Google it. Right, we're going to go in straight in with a classic and I am going to put this, I already know the category this is going in. You can probably guess. This here is the ZZ Raven. So it is, is it Zamiculus Zamifolia is the name of the plant. Uh, it's essentially a black ZZ. It kind of has to go in here. It has to go in iconic because... Now, this isn't completely true, but it generally is true. A lot of people say that ZZ plants are very easy care, and honestly, they are. The only thing people tend to get wrong about that plant is how much water it needs. Now, they are very tuberous, and their roots are very tuberous, so they don't need much water. They can store it easily. But a lot of people think that you can, like, never really water them, and they're fine. It's not full succulent levels of <laughs> lack of water, if you know what I mean. A few people get that wrong generally. You should give them more water than what the internet generally says. I think, in my experience, if you want a nice, healthy-looking zizi that will actually grow. But in terms of a goth plant, it, it can't not be iconic, guys. This is a plant that is recommended, like... I don't know how many, like, goth plant videos are around on YouTube... But I bet you my left nut that a ZZ, a dark ZZ, is in every single one of them. Because it is just a classic plant. It's a classic suggestion. It's a well-rounded suggestion because you can find them. You can find them in plant shops. They're not super impossible to find or anything like that. They are easy to grow. They're no more difficult than the green one. They're, they're just good. They're all-rounders. So for me, absolutely iconic. Plus, a lot of people would prefer like a more structural hardy element to a plant than like a floppy, you know, like the oxalis that's next to it, for example. So for me, it's got to go in there. I think that's absolutely, that's totally the right place to put it. I'm going to go for one that hopefully Pam will like. When I say Pam, I mean Pam's Pretty Plants on YouTube. Uh, one of my best friends, if you're wondering. Um, I'm going to drop this one in and she's probably going to laugh at me because I can't remember the name. But it is a type of coleus and it is black. I'm going to actually check really quickly on my notes to see if I know the name of it. Why do I have a missed call? Who are you? I don't know who you are. You're 0800. You're dead to me. I don't care. So it is apparently a coleus black prince. Now, I'm assuming it is coleus. It looks like coleus. There's a little bit of confusion when I was looking for this on Google. But I'm going to call it a black coleus. And if it is wrong, I will pin the comment from Pam that tells me whether I'm right or wrong. So Pam, if you want to correct me, feel free. I'll pin your comment. I actually quite like coleus. I like I like the look of them. Um, I haven't come across them, though, really, in, in garden centers and stuff. So I've never picked one up. But I would. I really would. So this is a type of coleus. I assume it's easy to get. I'm making a massive assumption, guys. I don't know. Again, if you know, tell me. Um... I want to put it in iconic because I suspect it's so affordable, it's like a good option. But I honestly can't attest to the hardiness or anything like that. I don't know, I'm going to leave it where it is because I feel like if it's affordable, that's obviously a plus point. Um, it's dark foliage, it's a plus point. I'm going to leave it where it is and admittedly it is due to lack of knowledge. But you guys got to remember that you suggested half of these plants. So not every plant in this list I do know about, if you know what I mean. Some of them I just know of them, literally. Some of them I didn't know at all. So I've learned something doing this video anyway, but I don't know much about it. I'm going to leave it where it is because I feel like it's it's mid-road. I don't feel like it's going to be super easy care. Honestly, by the look of it, thin leaves, not a great start. I'm going to leave it where it is. If you know anything, um, write it down below and we can all learn about it because that might be a really good option for somebody. Let's go with a classic that I've sold many times. This, you probably can't tell very well. This is actually the back of the leaf, by the way. Here's the petiole. Here's the back of the leaf. I couldn't find any nice pictures of the front of the leaf. Most of them were juvenile, so I was like, okay, I'll just leave it. This here is Philodendron Dark Lord. I'm so torn in between putting it here and here. You have no idea. Um... It's tough. It's becoming more affordable. There's there's generally um, Dark Lord kicking about. It is obviously more expensive than, say, you know, a Coleus or, well, actually anything in this category, the Alocasia as well. It is more expensive, but it's called Philodendron Dark Lord. Harry Potter fans, you can relate. It's tough because it's not super dark foliage, but it is quite dark. There is another plant in this list that I actually prefer over Dark Lord, so I might put it higher. So I might leave this one where it is, and I will explain why when I get to the other plant. The cool thing about this plant, though, is that it does actually bleed when you cut it, and I think I still have stains on my concrete from these plants bleeding when I was cutting them to propagate them, like last year. When you cut these plants, they do bleed, and it is literally like blood red, which 
I mean, cool if you want to propagate your plant, otherwise you wouldn't know that pointless fact. But they bleed, and I will warn you now, it stains. So if you are propagating, just be careful. Good plant, a little bit more money, but it's not its not silly money, I wouldn't say. I think it's quite good, and I think you can get a lot of plant for your money. Um, I'm going to leave it where it is because it's good. It's called Dark Lord. It's got red bags. It bleeds. It's got everything you'd want. It's pointy. It's nice. It's long. It's a climate. It's a philodendron. I'm going to leave it here. It's not quite iconic, but it, it's... Oh, it's close. It is close. I just think there might be a couple of others on here that I'd put into iconic. So we're going to leave that one where it is as well. Right. Let's do... Which ones do I not know the names of? There's two here I can see that I don't know the names of. So we're going to go for this one. Now, I could have chosen a few of these uh, plants. This is a type of Calathea, by the way. I could have chosen a couple of different Calathea, but I went for this one because it was like the darkest and more Halloween-y vibes that I could find. This here, I do believe, is the Calathea Rosio Picta. And as you can see, it is a round, paddly-shaped leaf, and it has pink veins, pink um, accents, points been looking at too many horses pink accents on the leaves um where i put this see i love calathea and if you followed my channel long enough you'll know that i actually started out with calathea that was like my thing because i'm quite a highly strung person and if a plant can get stressed or have a freak out i genuinely for some reason bond with it i don't know why so before i got into stupidly rare arrows that everyone kills i got into calathea which also a lot of people tend to kill um, so I like the plants. I've never owned this one, though. Now, fun fact about me, I don't actually like pink. It is my least favourite colour. I am not a fan. I am not a pink kind of girl. I am a black or neutral or green or blue kind of girl. So I wouldn't own it, but I think it's got good foliage. I want to leave it in Yes Boy. You know what it is? I feel like I do this in every video. Like, the Yes Boy column is, like, the biggest column of them all because I'm just so undecided. But I'm going to leave it there. I think if you want a Calathea that is dark foliage, this is a great starting point. I think it's middle of the road. Again, it's a Calathea. It's not the easiest thing in the world to look after. If you're not gifted with Calathea, you probably are going to struggle because they like high humidity. They do not want to miss a watering. And by that, I mean a day late you're going to see signs of it. You're going to see signs of crispy leaves from a day of not watering if they needed it. Um, they're not forgiving plants, in my experience anyway. Obviously, it depends on your type of substrate, but when in doubt, pot wetter rather than drier. So we will leave that where it is. It's middle of the road for me. I'm going to pull out a begonia. I have two begonias in this list, and before I pull out the first begonia, I will tell you that, honestly, I could have put in many begonia in here, and I know y'all are going to probably say that in the comments. So if you'd like to suggest other begonia that are honestly goth plants or Halloween plants or however you want to, you know, put it, then feel free down below in the comments, because I'm aware that there are literally tons. I just picked two. So I picked a more generic looking one, and then I picked, like, the bougie one, if you know what I mean. Um, let me just check on the name of the generic one, because I think I do know it. Uh, do I know it? Do I know it? Okay, I haven't even written it down, so that's good. So I'm about to guess what this begonia is called. I believe this is begonia. Is it black? No, not black magic. It's not All Hallows' Eve, because begonia All Hallows' Eve, which I nearly picked, is orange in the middle, and it's very cool. Um, what is it? It's begonia black something. Again, correct me underneath in the comments. Um, I like it, but it's begonia, and I've, I've made no secret of the fact that I don't love begonia, so I'm not Gonna put it in Yes Boy. Again, I know I'm gonna offend people. I'm probably gonna put it in here because I'm just not... I'm just not a fan. I, I can't really give you an articulation that makes sense other than I don't really like it. It's probably quite affordable if you want my, like, non-biased opinion. This isn't the only begonia I think you can pick up for affordability for a dark, you know, like a dark foliage plant. So I think... This is more like a representative begonia of something you can pick up. But it's nice, I just, I'm not, I'm not bothered. Quite honestly, I'm not bothered. And there's another begonia that, even though it is a lot more work, begonia lovers will probably know what I'm going to come up with next. Um, even though it's a lot more work, I, I like the look of it more. And I'm willing to be beaten up by this plant, really. So I would put that higher. So I'm going to leave this one here because I'm just not... Is it begonia? I'm so sorry. And I am going to try a begonia, by the way, next year, I think, as well, to see if I can change my opinion on begonias. Um, I, I, There's a couple of begonias I like the look of, and I am genuinely going to try them. But this one, I would not try. The next begonia that I am going to rank a lot higher is this one. If you do not know, this is the begonia Darth Vaderiana. Darth Vaderiana. It's, it's Darth Vader, isn't it, really? So, yes, 
Really nice begonia by looks alone. It's angel wing begonia because the wings, because the wings, because the leaves look like angel wings. It's a nice one and it looks like it has, from the photo here, it's like a lime green border. It might be yellow, but to me it looks lime green. What I know of these begonias is that they're really beautiful, but they're a bit of work. I know a few people have killed these. Um, I want to put it in iconic because of what it is, and I know a lot of people strive to have this. I think this is quite a desirable begonia. I'm pretty sure I put this quite high up in the rare plant index I did on begonia. If you haven't seen that, I will link that below. Just know that I don't really like begonias, so the whole video I'm not really massively impressed. If you can get round that, then it's a good video to watch, I guess. So I think I put this quite high up, but again, I'm not... I'm not crazy about begonia. I'm not sure if I'd personally try this off the bat. I think I would go for like a, just a more affordable begonia first to see if I like them, see if I can handle them before going straight into this and killing it because I don't know how much they are, but I know that they used to be a lot. So my, I don't, I can't even give you an estimation as to what this is worth. Um, I do think it's iconic because I think a lot of people would bring this up. I do think a lot of people would bring up the common ones as well. It's not that they wouldn't. But I think because this is darker, there's more to it. It's a challenge. You know, it's a bit of a bragging right if you've been able to not kill one, etc, etc. Um, I'm going to leave it here because I think that's where people would generally put it. It'd be quite interesting, to be honest, to see other people do videos based on this and see where they put things. But that's where I'm going to put that. I'm going to drop this next plant in and I'm going to explain what I'm talking about because I'm going to generalize a little bit here. So I'm going to drop this guy in. This, I believe, is a picture of Anthurium mudinum. That is what I typed in on Google to get this image. And it looks a lot like my mysterious dark boy. Now, if you have not been following my channel recently, maybe you're new here, maybe you just haven't watched every video. Um, I have a dark Anthurium that looks a lot like this. And I mean a lot like this to the point where a lot of people think it is mudinum. I'm not sure. I don't think it is. It might be something else. But it looks, for most intents and purposes, it's the same. So when I talk about this plant, I'm also kind of talking about the one I have, which if it's, I don't know if it's called Red Secret, I don't know. Um, anything that looks like this Anthurium, really, even though I believe I'm showing you an Anthurium mudinum. Now, Anthurium mudinum is often not ID'd correctly because so many people sell things that look like mudinum as mudinum when they aren't. So take this picture with a pinch of salt, but generally speaking, mudinum looks a lot like this. The leaves stay dark for an awful long time. I know mine do. Mine are still dark. As long as you get good light on them, they will go really dark for you and they will stay dark. Mine have stayed dark for months. Um, and this has been documented throughout my channel and stuff. I really like this plant and I'm going to push it straight here. I'm, I'm almost... God, should I push it up again? Because I like to reserve, by the way, the sexually attractive category for stuff that I'm really like, oof. And you know what it is? Since owning the one I've owned, which is kind of the same, but not the same, theoretically, I really love it that much. And I've seen you guys react to it, and I know you all like it as well. And I am propagating it, by the way. Um, I will have a couple maybe next. Definitely by spring, I'll have some to sell to you. Um, I'm going to push it up here. And it's not, honestly, it's not because I own it, because I don't think I own that actual plant. I think I own something very similar. But when I push that plant up into sexually attracted, I'm pushing up any plant, any anthurium like that, that keeps leaves that dark for an extended period of time. So take that entry with a bit more generalization than what is shown here. Any anthurium that can do that for me personally I am sexually attracted to it. Yeah, I think it belongs there. I think they're lovely plants. And honestly, if you're having trouble, if you think that you have a plant that should do this, or you know your plant should do this and it's not, seriously put it under good light. Light and heat. Get that bumped up a little bit. So maybe get it on a heat map, put it under a grow light. I tell you now, you will get better results from it. Um, bump the humidity as always with everything. But you will get good results out of that. And I promise you, the color will stay because mine has, and when I bought it in, it hadn't. The older leaves on mine just weren't that good. Now, the older leaves on mine stay like that all the time, and it's awesome, let me tell you. Mine isn't super glossy, it's actually just like the picture, which is really interesting. But yeah, let me know what you think of this plant. I know a lot of people, as far as Anthurium, that are more on the regular side go, this is your boy. It might be something you want to look at. This next plant here, 
This palette is so good. I have maybe one of these in the shop, maybe two. This here is Philodendron Majesty. Honestly, you can kind of compare it to the Dark Lord beneath it there. They're quite similar, but if I actually had to pick a plant to have permanently, if I could have one out of the two, I would actually pick the Majesty. And I'll tell you now, it's going straight in here. This plant is so hot. It's a little bit like, honestly, if you know what Philodendron Ilmanii looks like, and I'm talking about like the variegated pointy thing, the leaf shape is very, very similar. In essence, a Majesty's leaves are a, a quite coffin shaped, I would call them. There's like a slight coffin shape to the top of the leaf, and it's really, really pretty. Not only that, but these are matte black, and the stems are black. Matte, matte black. Matte black. The Dark Lords are not, by the way, they're burgundy. I think they're still matte from memory, but they are burgundy. They're not the same. In fact, you can see it here. It's like a purple burgundy color, and they are matte. It's very nice. This is black. The leaves are thicker than a Dark Lord. They're more structural. They're just more leathery in appearance. Like, if you are personally in doubt over whether to choose the Dark Lord or the Majesty, honestly, sell her aside, because honestly, I don't really have these in stock, but I have these in stock. Choose the Majesty, because they're nicer. And you can't really find these as well. Totally, honestly, you can't. Um, Watch, I'll say that, and then they'll be everywhere now. That tends to happen, so have a look if you're looking at this past the published date. They're just lovely plants, honestly, and I need to really get mine out and start potting it and probably put it in my studio and grow it. Really nice plants. They are iconic. They are a philodendron. They climb so they root well so you can get them up a pole. They're black foliage. They're tough as hell. They are tough as old boots, let me tell you. They are worth it, and I think that absolutely deserves to be in the category with this slot. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It is definitely iconic. These are really nice plants. Honestly, just Google them. Google them, Instagram them, whatever you're going to do. You'll see what I mean. These are nice plants. Ooh, we don't have that many, and I don't have anything in For the Drone. You know what it is? I don't think any of these are going in For the Drone. Actually, that's really quite interesting. So the next one that I'm going to pick, the next plant, is this one. And I've owned this before, and I got rid of it just because... Why did I get rid of this? I think I just had to downsize my collection anyway, and... It wasn't my favorite, although I can completely appreciate how unique this plant is. This here is the Alocasia Cupria Red Secret, or just Alocasia Cupria. Now, I'm pretty sure I read that there was like two different types on the internet. One was green, one was red. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if they're just all the same. It's environmental on whether they're red or green. Again, correct me if you like down below. I'm not going to be offended at all. Um, I genuinely don't know the answer to that one. But this is Alocasia Copria, and it's quite good. It does pop very easily, and it's one of the easier Alocasias, which is quite interesting, because it's definitely one of the more exotic. And honestly, it looks like something out of Alien, and it can't not go in here for Halloween, because it looks like it's going to hatch. I don't know, but I like this plant, and I'm borderline going to push it into here, because honestly, it's worth it. These are quite easily accessible, or at least they were when I was looking for them last year, there was a lot out on the market. Like, your typical garden centre had these in, and they had them in in bulk. Now, they might have dropped off and not in TC anymore, and people might not want them. A lot of people are freaked out, a lot of people don't like them. But it's going in iconic, because honestly, for, for what this video is, for goth plants, for Halloween plants, this should be in here. And it's accessible, so it gets a bonus. Because it's not very good if I show you a ton of plants that aren't accessible, right? Because, as, as I say, these things, to some people, are seasonal. Um, not everyone wants goth plants all the time, unless you're like dark in the heart like me. You don't want them all the time. So for that reason, it's in Iconic. I'm going to drop this plant in, and I'm going to immediately tell you what it's called, because I don't know. I think it is Lea, Lea Amabilis, I think. I would own this. Now, this is a shit picture. So what do I mean by that? It's, it's a good picture in terms of telling you what the leaves look like, but it's not a good picture in terms of telling you what the structure is like. I think from my memory, it looks like some type of begonia slash fern. Like it's, it's really nice. It does grow a bit more tree-ish. I would have one of these actually. Uh, these had like the tiniest, miniest boom, I think like a year or two ago. Um, I don't know where they stand now or anything. I don't, I literally, guys, I know fuck all about this plant. I just wanted to put it in this list because it's pretty. Um, for obvious reasons, it looks really striking. I don't know anything about it. I can't therefore really put it in iconic because again, I know literally nothing. I'm not about to say something's, oh my God, it's amazing when I know nothing about it. You know what I mean? Based on my opinion alone, it's probably still here. It's, I'm not just basing this on, you know, what I think people think. It's, it's also what I think. And I think here is good. I really, really like the contrast of these leaves. I think that's really pretty. And I don't think it's just this image. I think if you Google this, you do get generally what I'm showing you. Let me know what you think of these. 
Let me know if you own one. Let me know how popular they are because I'm really curious because no one really shows this and no one really talks about it. But I know it is a thing right then. So the next plant I'm going to recommend to y'all, and I think this plant is going to become more popular because I'm showing you it. And what I mean by that is this is a really, this is kind of a curveball uh, from what I know. And I think it's probably accessible. I think it's probably easy to grow. And I think it's a great cheap plant. So this plant here, let me get the name because I know the, the English name, but I don't know the actual name. Give me one moment. This is, can't pronounce it, are you ready? This is Epomia Ip batatas. <laughs> It's basically, guys, it's a sweet potato vine. I've picked this image here, hoping that it is the same plant but more mature. I've seen other plants like this that are heart-shaped. I've seen this plant here, and I've seen another plant that's similar. It's almost like a philodendron um, heteraceum, um, heart-shaped anyway. I think that the same plant, again, if they're not, feel free to correct me. I'm not going to be offended at all. Um, so I think they're the same plant. But I've shown you this because I believe to be the this is more mature. And I liked it because not only is it dark foliage, but it's got kind of like a Florida ghost vibe to it, only it's all dark purple, and that shit is great. I guess I'm going off the name and I'm assuming it's very accessible. I haven't done my research. That's not really what these videos are about. They're not informational videos, they're just literally my opinion. I'm gonna straight up push this in here because I think this would be iconic. I have a feeling that this is quite an accessible plant if you want dark foliage and you don't want to throw a lot of money at anything and you do want to just have something that's just gonna grow and it's gonna have, you know, the vibe that you want. Oh, just two plants left. Right, this one. I, I didn't even tell you what this is, but I'm going to anyway. This is the Philodendron Melanochrysum. Now, this has been like a staple plant for, honestly, most people are into aroids. This is a really good plant, and I think they've become quite affordable. Now, one thing I notice is not a ton of growers are selling these. I think this is more the private seller market right now. And I think if you're going to buy one of these plants, I'm not quoting every seller ever, obviously, but you're probably going to get something with leaves about this long. So you're going to get something quite juvenile. You're certainly not going to get that that you see there. The leaves on that photograph, if you don't know, they're probably this long. That's a that's a mature specimen you're looking at. So if you want to know anything about this plant, Google it. Look at the juvenile form because that's probably what you're going to be offered. You can get mature specimens. You're going to have to pay for them. Uh, you do risk losing leaves. And if the plant has recently been cut and it doesn't have a lot of root, you are going to go juvenile uh, with the new leaves. I'm going to say... It is iconic because it's it's a fucking melanocrysum, guys. I haven't sold one of these in such a long time either. I do have them, like I say, I just haven't propped them. So they're, they're just, they're kind of, ugh. do you know what I mean? I haven't sold them or propped them in a while. But they're a really good plant and I can't knock them. They're quite easy as well. They're totally worth it. And I do think they're iconic because it, it is a classic thing. If you think of dark foliage um, that's got some pizzazz to it, it is, you know, one of those plants would be a melanocrysum. So for that reason, it's staying where it is and iconic, and I think that's totally fair. Right, last plant. I couldn't not mention this. I feel like people would ask me if I didn't mention this. This here, I'm going to drop it here. This is the Queen Anthurium, but it is specifically the dark form. If you are not aware, you can get a Queen Anthurium that is it's basically more green, a brighter green. These plants are hard to look after. I'm not going to make any bones about it. Now, I think if you click with Anthurium, then this plant is great. You won't have many problems. Um, it's still a hard Anthurium to care for. I still struggle with mine, guys. I struggle every week. Um, more often than not, it's like rust bacteria or something like that. Um, but I do struggle with them. They're not an easy plant. I'm not going to sit here and say they are. But in terms of like drama, <laughs> it's the best word for an uh, Queen Anthurium that I can think of. Drama. And that's when they're not being dramatic and they're just sat in a corner looking good. You look at that plant, you think drama. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they're so exuberant and so whoa when you walk into a room that they are worth it. But this plant here, honestly, it is high on your difficulty scale. If you're more of an, uh, I don't want to say novice, but if you're less versed in looking at even Anthurium, let alone this plant, maybe this isn't the one for you. I would suggest picking another one off this list. But if you are, obviously... The queen has to go here. It is iconic. You know what? I am so, so torn in between keeping the plant here and here. It's nicer than a melano, in my opinion. I think this is more of a personal decision, obviously, but the queen anthurium means a lot to me. And if you are someone that's watched my channel since more or less the beginning, you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't need to go into it. The queen anthurium for me is actually a massive symbol of 
it's gonna sound so stupid, but it's a massive symbol of like my personal and professional development. And if you've seen my documentary, you know what I'm talking about. I know you know. So for me, it's going in sexually attracted. I still think it's an attractive plant, but I respect for a lot of people, it would probably be an iconic. You know, keeping this video true to myself, I'd probably say it was in sexually attracted because that plant is, is literally a symbol for me. Um, there's a few plants that are symbols for me. For example, Monstera oblique is a symbol for me. It's not just a plant. And even though I can fall out of love with the plant, it's still a symbol, like a milestone in development for me. And again, if you're new to these videos, you won't have a clue what I'm on about, and I completely get that. But fans of the channel will know what I'm saying, and you can probably articulate it a lot better than me. So I'm going to leave that there, and that concludes this list. Um, I didn't put anything in For the Drone, because For the Drone is, is shit, and... I don't feel like any of these are shit. I'm not going to put something in a category for the sake of it. I think that all of these things are placed fairly. Now, obviously, I took all these requests from Instagram. I didn't cover every single request, but I covered most of them because a lot of you guys were suggesting the same thing. So it is a smaller set of plants, but these were the ones that you guys were gunning for mainly. Some of them I put in of my own, you know, own findings like this one. Can't remember what this was called. Um, I think the sweet potato vine somebody did suggest... I think that one was, the Capri was actually my own suggestion. Even Oxalis was my own suggestion. I was quite surprised. Maybe that's just like too run of the mill for a lot of people, but please leave any suggestions down below. But you have my word that the Common House Plants video is coming. I take suggestions for specific plants on my Instagram and it's normally done maybe about 48 hours before I film the video. So that is likely to be the next video I do of this format. Please feel free to follow my Instagram, which I will leave the link on the screen, as well as my Twitter, where I'm noticeably more salty on my Twitter, usually most days. That's normally what it's used for. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. Any links to anything specific I've mentioned will be in the description, so please check there if you are looking for any guidance, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!